So how do you know if you need new bearings for your car or truck? Well, it might look a little bit like this. That's crazy, look at that. That's not okay. We should not be driving this thing. Super sketchy. Now, this truck had been presenting symptoms of bad bearings for a really long time. In fact, when I bought the truck, the previous owner told me that I would probably need new bearings, but I was super lazy about it. Um, there were times where we'd be driving and it would sound like there was a humming coming from the wheels. At one point, we'd be turning left and sometimes it would go clunk, 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 clunk. And then one day we were driving to Costco and it was just grinding like crazy. And then the grinding went away and I was like, oh, cool, grinding went away. A couple other symptoms were, you know, popping, clicking. When I was backing up, a lot of times it felt like the wheels were just dragging and not actually rolling. And a lot of it is because it wasn't actually spinning on the spindle very well. The big thing that sketched me out was we were on the freeway and one day the truck just kept wandering and kept jumping left to right and it really felt like the wheels were gonna fall off. So at that point I figured enough's enough, I'm gonna stop being lazy. This was supposed to just be a very simple new calipers, new brake pads, new rotors, new bearings job. But when I took the truck apart, there were all kinds of fun surprises that presented themselves. The first one here, as I took the wheel off, I noticed that there was a wheel spacer on the truck. And this made a lot of sense to me because the truck had the factory wheels on it and, it's, and the wheels set up pretty wide. And I thought maybe it was just the tires, but actually there was this really thick two inch spacer on there. So I pulled that thing off and then all hell broke loose. So here you can see me pulling off the manual locking hub on the truck and it came off in pieces. It's not supposed to do that. The front came off and inside is a little spring there and it's just kind of hanging out. And then this bit was still on the spindle. They're supposed to sit together in here and then there's this C-clip that holds it all together. But on the inside here, there's supposed to be little ridges that holds this piece in there using the C-clip and they're missing. I'm pretty sure that they just ground down and now it, the whole thing is just kind of sheared away. So now the C-clip has nothing to grab onto. For comparison, here's what a healthy hub is supposed to look like. You can see that there's a C-clip in there and there's those little bumps that hold the C-clip in. On this one, you can see where the ridges are on the backside, but there's supposed to be a second set of those ridges above it that the C-clip can grab onto. So this thing is toast. Before I took the truck apart, the truck would sometimes disengage from four wheel drive and now I know why. So here's the real sketchy part. This lock nut here is supposed to be torqued down to 150 foot pounds. But as you can see, I have not used a tool and it, it just spins with my hand. And a lot of times people don't want to buy the special tool that is needed to lock these down properly and they'll just use a screwdriver and kind of try to tap it in there hoping that'd be enough but it's really hard to get 150 foot pounds out of that. You're supposed to use one of these little socket deals. It's got the little four prong on there and you stick it on here like this and then you're able to tighten it down. Another interesting thing that I found was that this thrust washer is actually supposed to be three pieces. It's supposed to look like this where it's completely flat. I don't know if it's good, there it goes. So you see how this one's coned out here and this one is flat. It's supposed to look like that and it's supposed to sandwich in between this plastic washer and this metal washer here. Okay. You can also find on older models that this piece is thicker and it's as thick as all these three pieces combined. This piece was on there by itself. These two pieces were missing or maybe had disintegrated. I got really lucky and I was able to get a whole bunch of these little parts, little spare parts for free at the local pull and save here in Spokane Valley. But before I found them at the pull and save, I bought them brand new from TorqueKing.com. And these things I think were like 15 or 20 bucks. So now I've got a fat stack of spare parts, but if you want to save some money, go to the pull and save. I used this to take off the inner lock nut, not because it was tight, but because there was so much dirt and grime in there that the inner lock nut didn't want to spin. With all the lock nuts off, I was able to slide the rotor off of the spindle and here you see what's left of the bearing. Here's a closer look at the spindle. It's pretty mangled and nasty. And here on the ground you see what's left of the bearings. That whole bearing there is the outer bearing. The inner bearing was completely demolished. Those are the rollers sitting there on the ground. Now here you can see the damage that was done to the ABS sensor because the rotor was just grinding on it. It ground down the sensor itself and also the mount piece. Here's a comparison of my ABS sensor here on the left hand side. 
compared to what it's supposed to look like. If you look closely right here, this is actually the inner bearing seal that's just kind of chilling there on the spindle. It's not actually in the rotor anymore. And right here is what's left of the inside part of the bearing. Now this is completely optional, but I kind of like the look of not having the dust shield for the rotors, and so I take mine off. Now here's the inner bearing seal, just kind of hanging out. And then that's the inner part of the bearing completely seized to the spindle. So I tried to get this thing off the spindle several different ways. I use a chisel and a hammer. I use a Dremel with a cutoff wheel. I tried a bigger cutoff wheel, which made it a little bit easier, I guess. But then I kind of got sketched out and I didn't want to ruin the spindle itself. So I went back to the Dremel and then a chisel and a hammer and then the Dremel again. This took forever, at least 30 minutes of just grinding and cutting. And then I was able to finally cut away enough material so that it would budge. I got a, I was able to get a chisel between the spindle and the bearing and I was able to kind of tap it out little by little. I tried spinning it and it would just move but it wouldn't come off the truck. And then finally I was able to use this little hook thing to get it to finally come off. There it is. Jeez. So here's what's left of that inner part of the bearing. It's pretty mangled. And now here's a close look at the spindle and the ABS sensor. So since we're here, I'm going to just kind of hold this up to the camera and you can see just how badly scored this spindle was. You know, I wanted to try to reuse it, but it's in really bad shape. Those are some nicks that I put in it using the angle grinder and the cutoff wheel. But even without those little nicks, you can see how much damage and how much scoring was already on the spindle. So here is my spindle. And here's a good one. You can see that this is a lot smoother. This one's in a much better shape. There's not a whole lot of scoring or discoloration. The old one. And mind you, this is a used one that I bought. Um, I, you can buy these brand new on, uh, I think Jeff's Bronco graveyard for 150 bucks, or you can go to a pull and save if they've got them and pull these off of another truck and just stockpile them. I paid 18 bucks for this and I was able to get all of the hardware for free included. Another difference you might notice is that this spindle has little notches in it and that's for the ABS sensor. Well, this one is for a non ABS truck. My truck is going to be mostly off-road only anyway, so I'm actually going to be removing the ABS in loose conditions with, in gravel, sand, snow. It's actually nice to have the tires lock up so that you can have like the snow or the gravel or the sand pile up so that you can stop faster versus with ABS, it's just going to keep pumping, 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 and it's going to take a whole lot longer to stop. So for my truck, both of these spindles are going to work. I decided to buy four of them, one to replace the bad spindle and three as spares because apparently on the D35s, these spindles are a wear part. And as you can see, they're super expensive to buy new. So I just wanted to have some stockpiled in case I ever needed them. The next thing I needed to do was remove the ABS sensor from the knuckle. And so I unbolted it from the back and then used a punch to punch it out the back. There it is. That thing is toast. A slide hammer with a spindle puller attachment is the easiest way to remove the spindle from the knuckle. I used this same slide hammer on the two trucks that served as my donor trucks for the spare spindles. But my truck was really, really rusted on there and I had to spray a ton of PB Blaster to get it to loosen up. But after a few whacks, it came right off. Over here on the left, you'll see that there's still a few bits left over from the ABS mount. There's a metal sleeve that the ABS sensor sits in as well as this little bit that stuck on there because I forgot to remove the bolt that's holding it on. Using a hammer and punch is a good way to knock this sleeve out through the back of the knuckle. It just takes a little bit of patience and you need to pay attention to make sure that you're tapering the outside edge so that it'll actually fit through the hole. If you're careless with it, it'll mushroom and it'll just get stuck and you'll have to push it back out. Using a vise, I was able to squeeze it down to make sure that it would fit through the hole.
Here I'm using a vice grip and a little socket extension on the back to remove the nut that was holding on this ABS sensor mount. If you intend on reusing the ABS sensor, make sure to remove the bolt before you pull the spindle. Here I'm wiping down the mating surfaces of the axle shaft. This is the part that connects to the spindle itself. And so I wanted to make sure it was clean and then I added some more grease. Next, I wiped down the knuckle to make sure it was clean and then applied some anti-seize in case I ever needed to service a spindle again. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to take it apart because the axles are old. I also put some anti-seize on the spindle itself and some new lube on the spindle bearing. The next part's really easy. You just need to slide the spindle back onto the knuckle. And here you can see that I've got the bearings and the lock nuts and all of the washers and spacers on the spindle. You don't need to do that. I just happen to do that because I want to make sure that this donor spindle would work and wouldn't free spin because I don't want the bearings to seize again. I then added some blue Loctite to the studs for the spindle. I then hand torqued the nuts down to the studs and then tightened them down using a socket wrench the same way you would your lug nuts to make sure that the spindle seated evenly on the knuckle. And then I torqued it down to about 40 foot pounds. So I think it's pretty safe to say that you probably shouldn't wait to the very last minute until your bearings are completely disintegrated before servicing them. But I'm actually really grateful for this experience because it taught me a lot about the front end of these trucks. You know, apparently the D35 spindles are a common wear item and they fall apart, they break. And so now I have a ton of confidence taking apart the front end and reassembling it. You know, when I went to the pull and save, I, I took about four front ends so that I could have my four spindles as spares. And now I know that if I ever break down the on, in the desert or on a trail or something, I could swap it out really fast. So I feel like that's valuable for me. The next video, I'm going to cover how to repack your bearings, how to put everything back together. So stay tuned for that. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, consider subscribing. I have a ton of video that I have not edited yet for the Ranger. I have a couple videos for the Integra and I'm really hoping to be able to go home soon. I've got some work to do on the Xterra, and I think that I might need to change the head gasket on the Beetle. So if you guys have any questions, as always, post them in the comments below. I love to hear from you guys, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.